Madam Chair, is just one more for the city of Dallas? Yes, sir. Please go ahead. Mr. Chairman, also the zoning request is by Park Hawthorne LLC. The property that might also look familiar to you. Uh, this is property right at the northern end of the city limits along the east side of North Forest Street Extension. It is immediately south of Ranch Point Drive and immediately north of Knights Academy Road. Uh, it's currently vacant. It has been subject to uh, some zoning actions in recent years. Uh, most recently, uh, plan development approval and then a plan development approval amendment. Um, and as we talked about the work session, the development plan that's proposed for this property is going to be yet another change. And with discussion with the applicant and staff, we decided that probably the best scenario now is to get it out of the plan development arena and to the conventional zone for RM. Um, subject property you see is zoned R6, that is R6 conditional. It goes back to the annexation of this whole area in 2007. The conditions pertain to a portion of the lots in that entire area of different sizes. There was always somewhat of an anomaly and a little bit of an encumbrance when we were dealing with plant development. So again, another reason to get it into conventional zone. You see the RA zoning in the county across the street, <coughs> and then the Bemis Road corridor. What's more telling here is the character area pattern, community activity center, and that land between Bemis and North Forest, and then more of the residential, lesser intense character areas around it. Um, but that plays a big part in staff's thinking. It is our belief that long term that that community activity center area will become commercial zoning based on development along Bemis Road. Therefore, the proposal is to rezone to multifamily residential. Staff use that as a transition between the commercial area on one side of Forest and then the existing residential and still some future residential development to occur on the east side. <coughs> the aerial image shows the current development pattern. You see the vacant field. Um, I think this was a youth pick strawberry field at one point that was popular. Um, I don't think there's a strawberry farm there at the moment, but there's um, a lot of vegetation in the field. And then you see many rooftops of the existing subdivisions. Um, footnote here is the developer, or the applicant for this property, is also um, in the process of going through subdivision review for two more phases of the same kind of subdivision. So the applicant is very much planted in this area. Um, subject property, recently view, looking southward from Branch Point Drive. You see the rooftops of the houses in the distance. Remember, just like we talked about with the plan development, there is a strip of land between the subject property and the existing single family. That is one of the proposed future phases of single family. So that is still yet to come. Um, other view adjacently looking back toward the northwest. This is where North Forest starts its curve back around the Venus Road. But this is the intersection of North Forest and Branch Point. And then directly across um, Branch Point from the subject property is yet another phase of single family development yet to come. Um, in your packet, um, you have the previous approval of the plan development with all its conditions. Remember when it first started, it was a very <coughs> conventional townhouse development. It was originally approved. It was later amended. It was still townhouse development, but a little more conventional. The, in this case, the applicant is proposing to amend the plan further, uh, adding another building of townhouse units, um, but sacrificing some of the proposed amenities, which is to ask you to put some further into the conventional world of development. And therefore, really, our end zone conventional serves it well. So, the previous slash land is this layout that you see here. Um, the facade elevations proposed at that time for the, uh, uh, the towers. <laughs> and the current site plan is really not much of a change other than one more building added to the north in exchange for giving up some land for the uh, amenity space. Basically, still the same layout. It is multifamily. Um, but townhouse style, just like it was before, but free from the burdens of the plan development that would allow additional changes perhaps to be made to the site plan without having to go through a public hearing yet again. So with that, staff is finding the RM zoning proposal consistent with the conference plan, consistent with the standards of exercise of zoning power, which are articulated in your packet, and we are recommending approval of the conventional RM. Thank you, Matt.
commissioners, any questions for staff on this one? So, Matt, this is strictly a rezone right now. That's strictly a rezone. Plan development will follow. Okay. Correct, and it would invalidate the plan developments that are approved before that were based on R6 conditional zoning. So, this will be an RM zone that replaces it. And so, it would be multi family development subject to multi family standard conditions, or supplemental standards. All right, we will open the public hearing portion of this case. Is there anyone here this evening that would like to speak in favor of this case? Please come forward. State your name and address, please. Yes, sir. David Commission, Matthew Emmon, 4560, Dive North Drive, Suite E. And we're the engineer for the project. And uh, as Max, Matt went through and uh, gave a great uh, summary of the, of the uh, property. Um, Matt, there are still strawberries out there. Thank you. Well, there are. You got to work for them. But they're out there. I just trust the wrong Trust us. Go out there and look for them. They're still there. We'd like to keep mowing it down, walk out there all you can, and with the mow the property. But um, the, the, the previous layout you guys had um, was for a developer out of Atlanta. Um, Y'all know they do things in Atlanta differently than they came here to do it. They ran their market analysis and everything. And frankly, the layout they had, they had things set up just wasn't going to work. It wasn't efficient, as efficient a layout. There was an extra road there. We were paying for the roadway. And work the extra building there. So we, we like the layout now. As you know, it's eight buildings instead of seven because you're paying that that drive between them. You know, it's more efficient for the for the development property. Another thing that uh, I don't know if Matt's been involved in as much with Matt, uh, with Venom Dow. Um, this property uh, currently doesn't have anywhere to pump its it's sewer to. We can't go to the high tower. I'm sorry for good year lift station we're planning to go to. We're going to run an off-site sewer main roughly about a mile to the south. And this is hopefully uh, going to be a combined lift station with fire stations just south of us. Um, share the, the burden of that, that location um, with the city and um, hopefully be a good neighbor there. But um, there, there's a lot more project costs in this than it was six months ago um, due to the offsite location. So, um, as part of that, we need this property to be as efficient as possible and to get as many units in there to you know, kind of offset the cost of that lift station and all the, all the other things in there. Um, so, basically, as Max said, it's just to get out from that, that other way. Um, we know it's our third time through this one. We hope third time's a charm, but we don't like to you know, keep coming here every time. We, we have to make a change, but we, we believe this layout works, and um, we 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 construct that the offsite lift station is part of what's driving that that uh, discussion to get more units on there, uh, just make it as efficient as possible for the development. Thank you. Any questions for the speaker? Uh, just a question. My concern is uh, with the shared uh, visitor park, mm -hmm. and that's going to be uh, located on the north end. Yes, sir. And Occupants on the south end, uh, visitors, that's a pretty good uh, walk, uh, some steps, and sharing pocket. You think that's going to be a parking for visitors? At Christmas time, I can promise there's not. There's never enough parking. You couldn't design a parking in these kind of developments. But for average average weekend, we do believe it is. And that was the schedule to be in with, with staff um, on that. The reason why the, the, the parking's kind of close to like it is. That's where the top lot is. We hope they'll be, you know, they'll be driving over to use the top lot. It's really the only minutes that we have on site that would kind of congregate a lot of people on there. And, and the property, you know, it's parking distance is relative in Atlanta. You know, it's less than a block to walk. It's close in South Georgia. It's far away. It's, it's, you know, it's really not that far away if you have to use the parking. Yeah. Um, we know, we know they'll park some other places on the side streets and other areas. Um, but that, that's why we got to kind of show them what we do. Yeah. Well, Atlanta, that's a the ball game. <laughs> and, uh, yes, sir. And I understand that. Yes, sir. But where are they going to park? My concern is safety. Because if they don't have enough parking, they're going to be parking up where? On the streets, correct? Yeah. They, 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 they the field or Yeah. And there's enough parking on the south side. Oh, I'm sorry. I need more orientation. On the west side. Yes. Um, we think they would park some over there probably on, on that. You know, it's going to be roll curves. So they probably would park over there. Um, just on, that, on the opposite side, on the, the top of the curb. Um, we, we originally had a lot of grass parking on the this, on this site, shown optional grass parking. Um, the developer doesn't like that because currently the uh, semis for the Jason neighborhood use all the right of way to park in the neighborhood, and that's never the intent to have those semis parked there um, on that side street. So we're, we're going to plant trees in our, our area to, to uh, discourage the semis from parking on there. That's not where semis should be parking in neighborhoods. On a residential street, but um, I, I hear your concern, and, and I think that with three, there's three parking spaces per unit as it currently sits. There's there's one in the garage, and there's two in the driveway. It's in each unit. So 
There are three bedroom units, so there should be enough parking on average day to another park in the park at each unit. What, what each one during. So if somebody has an event or has a party, there obviously need to be some outside parking. Um, but that's that's why we have parking before. So there's no other options for this uh, shared uh, business park. Well, the, the area that I'm, I'm suggesting they park on is kind of a landscape area. So in, within the code, there's really not a lot of space we have to, to put them. We know they will park between the trees. We know that, you know, that they, we, we have a lot of, a lot of four-wheel drive trucks, and they'll park about anywhere they want to. Um, so, you know, I don't know that anywhere, anywhere else we can show them, but I don't think there'll be a hard time finding a place to park on the side of the street out of the, out of the travel way is what I, what I would, what I would hope they would use. Thank you. Is this a real application? I don't believe that's the intent right now. I, I mean, that's what's going on. Okay. I don't believe I have any control of that, frankly. <laughs> I don't know that answer. I think the intent is to sell them, but, you know, at the end of the day, if that's so much easier to rent one, I don't know we can do a whole lot with them. Oh, no, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that it looks like a rental application. Why do you ask that? I mean, oh, I just, I just did. Okay. No, I mean, this is a difference, though, as far as. Parking or I mean, I mean, you know, I really haven't thought too much about the additional parking until it was brought up. But I mean, it is. I mean, if you got, yeah, you have three bedrooms and you got three big. I don't know if it happens or three airmen or three big issues yeah. too. Is that a grid those things? Mm -hmm. They could easily be turned into six cars. That's why I'm asking yeah. because if it is rental and you've got several roommates in a house, that could conceivably increase the number of cars. I mean, I, I, just, I mean, with this, this townhouse application in big cities, uh, I think more of the car sales application on, on, on a tax townhouse in South Georgia had to call fire yet. There's several going on, we'll find out real soon. If they're, <laughs> yeah. There's several, several in development we'll know yeah. in, in several months. Yeah. Yeah. What's going on? But also, uh, the, we got more parking on this one per house yeah, than we do on the All the developers here now are here uh, putting all these houses in their rental portfolio and selling them off to Wall Street, too. So, I mean, I mean that, that, that's their big, that's their big motto. And there's, there's, compared to the rest of the nation, we are, we are a very enviable place for cost to units. Apparently, yeah, apparently, we are very enviable. Mm -hmm. We've drawn a lot of uh, big builders point, in the Very good point. Does your recommendation on this case hinge any in any way on whether it's going to be sold or rental? No, but like you said, you know, once it's built, it's built. We can't regulate. Thank you. Any other questions for Mr. In? I, I want. I just want. No, not for. It, this is a three-story building. Two-story. I mean, two-story two townhouse. Two okay, they're townhouses. So they're no, they're townhouses. Okay. That's similar. That's a similar, similar, that's that's a similar layout. We're I walked out. I think whenever this come up. Huh. But this is similar. Is this is this a front facade or a rear facade that's posted here? That's that's a that's a rear. Well, that's facade. the front facing the courtyard area. Yeah, that's, that's a that's yeah. The, the courtyard area has a front facade that way. And and do we have other layout? There's it's the garage is looking the back to the rear of the, yeah. the rear of the unit. There is such a thing. Their complex is designed so the front walls face each other and the rear walls of the garages face each other. So it's an alternating pattern. Which is a carryover from what they had in your plan development request. Same kind of concept. Any other questions for this gentleman? Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Okay. Is there anyone else here this evening that would like to speak in favor of this case? Is there anyone here this evening that would like to speak against this case or in opposition to this case? Seeing no one that will close the public hearing portion of this case. Commissioners, any last comments or suggestions or comments? Well, I'll, I'll comment. I agree with what he said about the parking. It really bothers me about, about parking, especially when you're talking about parking on green space already before we have four so the point on um, I just don't think about the parking. But correct me if I'm wrong, Matt. Isn't this just simply a rezoning request? It point? is. We're not approving a site plan. Okay. I mean, the comment I'll make is we that a site plan on. more than meets the minimum. Uh, the minimum for multifamily is one parking space per bedroom. Uh, we get credit for a garage, in this case one car garage, one vehicle, room for two in the driveway. So 
within the building areas, there is a number of <coughs> parking buildings. What you see at the north end of the property is extra. We did express to the applicant um, a suggestion that some visitor parking be spread out a little bit into the complex. They have some room to do it. There's no concern here on staff that parking will spill out into the road. What you see along the western boundary is a two-way driveway um, that runs along the edge of Forest. That's private property. That's their drive. My guess is realistically if there's extra parking needed for one or more of those buildings, that's where people are going to park is along the side of that driveway. We suggested that maybe designate a few um, parallel parking spaces there or some indents into spaces between the buildings. Even at the south end of the property, you see the little access where it is to a pump station and a pond. Maybe a handful of spaces there just to help balance what's at the north end. But it may come down to what their parking demand is going to be based on who their parents are. The only good news is that the consolation is they've got physically some room on site to add some parking later if they really need to. Um, there's enough open room. And to give you an idea of how the numbers work based on the acreage, this could be a multifamily complex with up to 114 dwelling units. They're proposing 48. So in general, they've got right. Commissioner, any other comments on this? Can I ask a question? Sure. Matt, I, Matt, I'm just a quick question. Do you know the, the, the four load roads that you, you're going to load into with your car, how, how wide those roads are? Sorry, the center, the center road is those four twenty two. Plan twenty two foot wide with a one foot ribbon <coughs> on the outside of it, concrete ribbon on the outside of it. It's twenty two feet. And we we've had and, and just I'm, I'm sorry, I'm I am i am you all probably down my course on it. We had some parking along um, Branch Point Drive. We can add that back in. There was all the grass optional was what we had on every plan. It was a grass optional parking there for about ten or twelve spaces. If, if they're gonna park anywhere, that's that's an easy spot. There's twelve spots there. You know, we, we can we can or don't have to plant trees in there. We just want to make sure there's nothing com coming from Branch Point on our property. Because he owns all the property along Branch Point Road. If you drive there any time, there's anywhere between two or three semis parking that right away. And it's and it's just it's it's something we can't police. So we we're trying to not show that as being parking because we don't want obviously semis parking in it. Um, if y'all got any any ideas about deflect tires and semi trucks like a shot at, we're happy to, to hear them. But uh, that's the reason why it's not on plan. So there, we got we got about one for every, one for every other unit right now, and we can add about ten more back if we needed to down the road. If, that, if that's something that, that you know, staff staff desires. And, and I get I know we're talking about the regional. I hate to beat this thing to death, and I apologize to you, sir. But just I mean, I see a twenty-two foot wide road, and all these all these vehicles trying to load in there, and then you got three cars. I'm sorry, you're talking about the main road's twenty-four. No, I'm talking about the, the load roads, the, the four different the road yeah, people yeah. driving to the point yeah. of I mean, I just see them with. Unfortunately, one or two, or three or four, or five or six or eight or ten cars parked there. People can't get in, and get out. I'm just, I mean, that's the, that's not a reason. That's a reason problem. So it's not this tonight. Yeah, I just see yeah. it as a problem. It's concerned. I mean, anything that people in cars, they don't always follow rules and don't sometimes use the best common sense. So there's, <laughs> there's certainly room for that to happen. Also, uh, the fire apparatus. <laughs> This is a one way in, one way two, out. Two, 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 in between the buildings. No, no, not between the buildings. They pull in. They pull a hose up. And, and we call, yeah, we, 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 we've had a fire, we had been through a review of the fire department, mm -hmm. and they basically said that they will get the fire put out and they'll get the vehicle back out of the way. It's not the preferred route, but it's really not an option to put a road to look to the back because if we put it to make the turn race at the top, you have to call about two or three buildings. And obviously, that point's not worth development. But the unique shape of the property just doesn't allow for that. But the fire chief has said he would he will get the fire out. He's got to be happy to have it back out. But he promises the fire will not be will, will not a fire truck will not have a problem getting there to the fire out, and they will find a way back out of it. It's not the ideal design, but they they had a comfort answer. And that very question was asked during the review of the plan development, which was essentially the same side plan. So the fire trucks will park along that driveway that runs on the west side. And the fire hose reaches with plenty of extra room up between each building. They've got a hose just some main road to go their service. They have pull hose, but they'll, they'll drive where they need to get to. Yeah. They, they, they they so. And keeping in mind, it's every other. So the gaps you see here that are in the shaded, that's the driveway. Mm -hmm. The other gaps is green lawn. So the fire hose reaches even more easily across them. Mm -hmm. 
Thank you for coming back up. <coughs> Any other questions by the commissioners on this rezoning case? <laughs> Yes, I, I know it's a rezoning case that we're dealing with a narrow piece of property. However, it's been a, my concern with, obviously, this is a, a, a plan that they have going in there. You've got a 22-foot wide road going in there. And you're going to have cars parking on both sides of that road going in there. Yes, if that 22-foot road is wide open, yes, you can pull a fire truck straight in there and they can pull off anywhere they want to pull the hose off to it. But the concern is, is not this particular development, but any development with a narrow road going in there is going to be understand an this. issue. Good point. But will the plan development follow this request, Matt? Probably. Oh, no. We're, we're trying to get out of the plan development okay. rule. Um, the, but when they get ready to build, what will they have to do? Well, they'll have to meet all current development okay. Thank you. Okay. And keep in mind that the 22 yeah. is the driveway between buildings. Yeah. The access yeah. drive yeah. is two way, yeah. 24 feet wide, yeah. same as the two way Thank you. All right, I think we're ready to call for a motion on this matter. Mr. Chairman. Yes. On agenda item VA 2024-06 and uh, in concurrent concurrence with the staff's recommendation, I do recommend approval. All right, we have a recommendation for approval by Commissioner Roundtree and second by Commissioner Steve Hill. All those in favor of the rec motion to recommend approval? All but two, Molly, I think. All those opposed? Two. Two. One, two, opposed? So the motion to approve, recommend approval passes. 